Hi, I'm Ursula Sadiq, Senior Product Manager with Autodesk Plant Solutions. In this video, we're going to create custom block-based components. We will use the custom components directly in the model as a specialty item. And we'll also add them to a catalog for use as a spec component. Let's begin with a drawing that contains some AutoCAD blocks that I created for this video. When creating blocks for block-based components, the drawing does not need to belong to a project. Here we have five blocks, a valve with four ports, a gate valve, two actuators, a cone shape and a hand wheel, and a flange pressure gauge. When creating valve bodies and actuators, it's a good idea to match the insertion point locations. Here we see the gate valve body insertion point matches the two actuator insertion points, i.e. the insertion point of the valve is the center of the valve and of the actuators, the bottom of the actuators. We're going to now convert these blocks into AutoCAD plant 3D components. First, we need to add port information to the blocks. How many ports, where are they, and how they are oriented. We start by entering a command, plant part convert, and select the block. Then we use the add option to create ports. We specify the center location of the port, and then specify the direction outward. Turning on ortho helps specify port orientation. We accept the new location. We have the first port. We will do the same for our remaining ports. When we are done, we use the exit option. This saves the port information for the valve and ends the command. Once the ports are added to a block, you can use the plant part convert command again to view or edit the ports. So again, let's take a look here. The left side ports are there, and the right side ports are there. Now we'll add ports to the other blocks. We're going to zoom in to select the valve, the gate valve. Select the block, and again use the plant part convert command. We're going to use the add function to locate port 1 and give it a direction, and then add port 2 and give it direction. And we can press exit for the ports on this part are complete. Next, we'll work on the actuators. Actuators are different because they don't have ports, but we still need to run the plant part convert command so that the catalog editor can recognize them and add them to the catalog. So you run the plant part convert command and click on the actuator and exit. Do not add a port to these. Actuators must have zero ports. So we run this, this plant part convert command on both actuators, just clicking on it and then exiting. And now we'll work on the flange pressure gauge. The port is at the bottom, so we'll get a wireframe view, making it a little bit easier to snap to. Select the block, run the plant part convert command, run the add command, and center O snap to the bottom of this flange. We want the direction down, but it's not the working plane. Instead of fussing with the UCS, I'll enter 0, 0, minus 1. Uh, wait, that's not quite right. Um, I need to do the undo option. Try that again. Forgot my at sign. So do a center snap to the bottom. This time at 0, 0, minus 1. That looks better. OK, now we can exit. and We have that one port on this pressure gauge flange. I'm going to restore the view and zoom out. And we're done adding ports with plant part convert. Before we start using these blocks in AutoCAD Plant 3D, I want to take a look at some of the files we created through these last couple of minutes. In this custom parts folder, we have the drawing that was originally there, an XML file, which is identify what's available in the drawing, and a bunch of PNG preview images. If you want to share or move your converted blocks, you need to include the XML and the PNG file 
along with the DWG. All right, we can save and close this uh, block file. We're now going to look at adding the pressure gauge as a custom component to one of our piping drawings. It's not a spec-based component. It's an off-spec block. We can create this directly in the model with the custom parts dialog. We'll give it a test in this new project drawing. After setting in the size in the class, we're going to import a block from a drawing. There's our drawing. Here are various blocks with ports. We'll pick the gauge. Now in the port properties, we're going to set this to have a flanged end type. We pick flanged from the drop-down list. And we're going to set the facing of this flange to be raised face and enter a pressure class of 300 pounds. And then we're going to insert the part which closes the dialog. If we zoom in on this part, we can see and select it, we can see that it has a continuation grip where I could continue piping from it. I'm going to route some pipe down and to the left. Great. So now we have a new component as part of our line. This is fine for a one-off type of component, but what if we want to add it to a spec? We're going to go ahead and launch the catalog editor so we can add these block-based components to the catalog and then add these components to our spec. So we'll exit the drawing, load the spec editor. We're going to create a new empty catalog. We're going to name this new catalog custom and hit create. Then we're going to click the Catalog Editor tab and click Create New Component. We're going to select Use Custom Geometry, so we'll be able to select a block-based component. We'll specify the valves category, and we'll give it a description. We're going to use that four-port valve. We're going to call it a double-seated valve. And we'll set the number of ports to be four. And finally, we'll set the size range from one inch to four inch. And press create. After creation, we'll be in the general properties tab, where we'll set the long description. Then we'll move into the sizes tab, which you'll notice is different than the one seen for parametric components. Instead of setting dimensions for each size, we select a block. First, we'll remove some sizes that we don't want. And then for a size we want, we'll click the Select Model button. I have a different drawing here to select from, which contains three versions of that four-port valve in three different sizes. I'm going to go through and pick the model of the appropriate size for each of these sizes. When we create the blocks, we specified the port location direction using that plant part convert command. But the other port properties come from the catalog. We need to set the port sizes. We have the nominal diameters from the sizes we chose, but we need to ma add the matching port uh, OD for each of these parts. So here we'll go ahead and enter it for our 1-inch valve, our 2-inch valve, and our 4-inch valve. And then we'll go ahead and enter long descriptions for each of these sizes also. Our double seat valve 4 inches, our double seat valve 2 inches, and our double seat valve 1 inch. We are almost ready now to save to catalog. I say almost because there's one important detail. We need to create a folder that matches the catalog name in the shared content directory. In Windows Explorer, we need to open the folder that contains this catalog and create a folder that matches the catalog name. Since our catalog is called Custom, we need to create a folder also called Custom. 
Now we're ready to save. Press Save to Catalog, and notice that our part has been created. In this video, we've created block-based components, added them to a catalog, and added a block-based instrument to the model. In the next video, we'll continue right from here in the catalog editor and use our blocks to create actuators. Thank you for watching.